So when we get into the big mitochondrial toxins, of course, number one is going to be mold. So mold or the mycotoxins produced by the mold can definitely cause fatigue, can definitely jam up the mitochondria and the body's ability to generate ATP. It can also cause cognitive issues, mood issues, brain fog issues. These are all common side effects of mold. So when we look at mold, we got to see, is it an active issue where you're living in a moldy environment due to water leaks in the roof or windows or a sub pump, you know, backup or just chronic high humidity that's causing mold growth due to the high humidity. We got to figure out what's that cause. Is that an active issue or is it a past issue when you lived for a few years in college in that moldy basement that had black mold on the wall, right? What's the root cause of it? So is it a past exposure or an active exposure? That's really important to delineate that. We can always test the current environment and see if it's active. Um, we can also just take a look, see, you know, usually a good history can figure it out. If someone's in a relatively new home, no history of water leaks, they keep it acclimatized pretty well. The, the basement is, um, you know, waterproof, so to speak, dehumidifier, the whole nine yards. We can still test it to rule it out, but those are pretty good signs that it's probably not a home issue. Looking at the person's history can also tell. Do we have a, a time frame for the period of time that we lived in a real moldy environment? Yes or no? And so if it's an active issue, we always want to rule out the current environment because it's hard to heal if we have an active stressor like that that's continuing to perpetuate itself and in motion right now. So we want to delineate that. Is that an active issue now? If there's a strong past but not an active issue, it, it'd be good to look at mold mycotoxins in the urine. And so we can run a mold test looking at urine, urinary metabolites of mold toxins. And that's really good to do. I find you want to challenge that test because – if you have poor mold detoxification capacity, you may not be able to push that mold out in the urine, the mold metabolites out. And so utilizing some NAC and glutathione can really upregulate up phase two cytochrome P450 oxidase pathways, which help to expel that water-soluble mold toxins out in the urine. And when we look at the mold toxins, I mean, the big ones we're going to look at aspergillus, penicillium, stachybotrys. These are going to be citronin species. These are going to be the big mold ones that we're looking at. And of course, the the different molds like aspergillus or penicillium, they can produce, you know, similar mycotoxins. You could have an aspergillus species produce similar mycotoxins that a penicillium species could produce. So good to, to look at the actual mycotoxins too. That can be a problem. Most people that have a problem with the mold tends to be more of the mycotoxins. Also, if we have chronic colonization of mold due to the environment, but we have a lot of mold in our gut due to it, like we're actually a mold factory in our gut, you know, it's good to look at that, address the gut, but also make sure we address the environment too. You want to really hit it on both sides of the fence. So mold's a big one. You got to figure out active or not, previous exposure, yes or no, and also how, how, how high. Because if you're just kind of going in and you're doing a mold detoxification program and someone's still feeling not the best a month, two months, three months in, it's going to be easy for a patient to quit if they're not seeing the results they want. So it's good to know how high their levels are at because it could be something that may take months or even a year or so. So it's good to really quantify it so then you can set the expectations so the patient knows, hey, this is going to be a long-term treatment. 